think they're having a conversation, which is the first and foremost most important part, you know. And the way I see it, it's like brands are starting to have a new type of dialogue with the customer. You know, the customer, the public in general has a, a lot more knowledge, they have a, they're a lot more discerning. So, you know, being a designer now means something different than being a designer in the previous sort of generation. And I think uh, what makes room for a large opportunity is that there's new space for new dialogue. Um, I think there's new room, you know, there's a new, to me, you know, there's a new space to be defined, that's the best way. Like, I don't think we've yet to see how substantial and how innovative and how creative this new merger is meant to be and, you know, my work is focused on making it, you know, making tangible examples, whether that be a fashion show or a garment or a collaboration, just to find space and, and I've always been about, like, discovering by doing. So that's sort of my, you know, I take that as my personal goal is to understand what this new ethos in design can breed, like new, you know, new collections, garments, and new ways that fashion can relate to the public. Yeah, you know, I'm not sort of like comfortable with like a status quo. You know, it's important to note too, I, originally I was just a, you know, consumer. I was the person that was just buying things that were interesting. I came from an era within streetwear in New York in Los Angeles and Japan that there was sort of like great vibrance because it was new and sort of an independent market and then obviously times are different so instead of when those brands or designers those things weren't sort of able to continue I saw a void you know picking up the conversation where they left off and so for me it's just about you know expressing ideas and sort of building a project that sort of tangible in a way. Um, it's easy, you know, it's in the history books, <laughs> you know, there's already stores on streets for that. I think we have yet to see what's the future, what's the, what's fashion look like past, you know, Yves Saint Laurent's idea of ready to wear. I think that now we are in a generation where us as sort of participants in this sort of streetwear culture can sort of dictate and build. More than anything, I feel like I'm a descendant of, you know, everyone from Kanye West, Pharrell Williams, to Basquiat or Warhol. You know, I'm, I'm no one, sort of, as the first statement. Second statement is we're a part of a generation, you know, an art history. A movement that goes beyond just the website hype beast. You know, before we were sort of documenting these products, it was, you know, there was a the sex shop with Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren. There was Nigo and Hiroshi sort of crisscrossing and sharing street culture ideas. But you know, I draw that line all the way back to the Renaissance or you know these art movements. So. You know, essentially, I'm just an assistant to the people that came before me trying to add to the design that goes forward for the next generation to continue. Like, I'm not anything. I'm just creative. You know, there's different words, there's different boxes to put types of creativity into, which I'm not that preoccupied with. I'm only interested in, like, making relevant ideas. All of them, you know, I, everything's sort of equally weighted for me. Every project I take on, I try to like swing as hard as possible and make it as sort of potent and as good. You know, I don't, I don't do a project that I can't sort of, sort of grasp around. You know, and I think more than anything, it's I'm considered, I'm sort of focused on this sort of lineage of work and sort of consistency across different. That to me is more important than. A particular project and what the resonance is on that. It's that if I did something in an album cover, a sneaker design, an in-store experience, or a temporary flyer on my Instagram, that 
everything sort of is rooted in some principle that's signature to my work. Uh, I think because, you know, it's like the shirt that I made that's behind me. It says like post post modern. It's this idea that if it's been done before, you want it sort of refreshed just enough for it to be engaging to recognize it. And so, my what I've been doing of sort of my own work is sort of like making work, sort of just you know thinking freely, but then also analyzing that work to understand why it resonates. So then future work is based off of the analysis plus that creative spark, you know. And I'm about, for me, it's, it has to have a rationale. You know, design is just design. It just sits on the table. But unless there's a rationale or a thought process behind it, then it, to me is it valuable. So, you know, that's just how I think. It's a design. Mm -hmm. You know, the lectures are there's sort of, you know, I've yet to work on sort of my first book, sort of the cataloging all the work or sort of expressing the ideas. So those lectures, those are, you know, those are sort of like systems to communicate an idea. And a lot of what I think is missing from our culture's discourse, whether it be critical, whether it be instructional, whether it be motivating, whether it be, here's how to actually do this, just don't be a consumer. And, you know, those epiphanies I had for myself started the work. And my idea is if I'm sort of borrowing airtime, I'm also going to give back. And sort of, in the, to me, it's only better if this sort of community of streetwear actually grows and, be, and is a foundation. So it's not me just the sort of lone ranger sort of exploring ideas, having these sort of valuable experiences in the past, going out to sort of achieve something for myself that's not interesting to me. Yeah. The only thing interesting to me is my own body of work, and then working and being creative. But as you said, like you know, you know, like hype these comments themselves are interesting. That sort of like culture, you know. I don't read any of it, but I can identify with that sense of sort of critique, humor, expressiveness that should dictate what those products look like that are up top of those comments. You know, it's a community, and I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I don't read them, but I get... I can see an image and already know what the comments are. To me, that's a valuable design skill. Mm -hmm. And it, I could discount it, but I don't. I like it. I think it's our, it's our barometer as if, <laughs> if a t-shirt is worthy of being made or not, or if a sneaker is actually adding to the culture. You know, I want the larger fashion industry and ecosystem to not see us, you know, as this sort of like fly-by-night trend, this sort of hyper-consumer, you know, there's real discerning taste. There's kids in our community that know, you know, Helmet Lane collections by heart, <laughs> you know, there's kids with crazy archive collections and then they also understand the sort of camaraderie amongst themselves, they understand that true mix. I, my only contention was that there's no designer that manifested that, you know, there's more, there, there's a lot now, which I think is great, you know. My only, my true sense is to be myself in any sort of scenario, so I'm authentic to that. It's not like a, it's, that to me is what should be happening in 2017. You know, I shouldn't be sitting, like looking at photos of these important moments and wonder why, why are these other cultural things so important, but then these other ones are so separate. You know, I very much, you know, can sleep at night because they're, where Jordans at the Met, you know, and the Migos performed there, you know? To me, that's, that's an, my work is sort of founded on that. It's like no longer being the peanut gallery or staring with your friends like, man, so-and-so should have won this VMA or something. It's like, wait, let me get off the couch, <laughs> make something, and sort of put those two things on the table so that uh, kids can rejoice in feeling like, oh, this institution 
has is recognizing what's happening in the street. Mm -hmm. uh, it's me, you know, same 17-year-old version of myself, skating, listening to rap music, and Nirvana and Guns N' Roses. You know, I'm just older, and I've made a profession out of it. You know, I don't, it's not, on one hand, it's not work by any means. I'm still, like, just being free-form creative, but it's my life, you know, it's my creative expression. To me, one of the main motivations is that, you know, I'm an optimist, you know, I'm into humanity more than like the cool sneakers or something, but design has that ability to transform and use both those tools, you know. I sit around and I think, wait, like my interactions with people are not rooted in sort of uh, prejudice against like race, age, color religion, you know, sexuality, but a lot of people feel that way, you know, and I'm, my project embedded, like, I would say at the core is like humanity and education, like we can use design, we can use trends, we can use brands, we can use good ideas to sort of share information, and so that's my main motivating factor, and I just use it as proof. You know, yeah, you can go to a job interview in a hoodie now. It's, you shouldn't be hired whether or not you have the right sort of costume for the right persona. But maybe things are more relevant now that speak to, you know, it's all about personal expression. You know, these clothes are just tools to sort of make a collage about yourself so that people can sort of understand what you know. Zero stress. And it's just my phone. <laughs> You know, like, I've always made it a point to be friends with a varied group of people. That goes into, like, my optimism or whatever. And it's like, it was just a design conversation. Make something that was valuable. Like, all these words that I'm saying, you know, like, I'm a very big sort of advocate that you can take these words and put them into a product. That's an epiphany. Like, I didn't know that you could, you know, it's a shoe is a shoe. Like... How can you say that it's supposed to like bridge all these gaps and be interesting for you know a tourist and a purist, someone that's obsessed with sneakers and someone that just literally doesn't care but looks at them and they're like, oh, you know, crossing all boundaries of is it streetwear, is it high fashion, is it for young, is it for old? You know, that can be designed in a whole ecosystem. So for me, you know, I'm thankful the response, but that's what I design. That's that's probably like goal number one is make something that people cherish. You know, we shouldn't be making more shoes if they're not different to me. They, they should have a reason for existing. It's all personal feedback. You know, like if I get along and we f there's a spark, then something can be made together. So, you know, that's important to me. It's also important the iconography of certain things. You know, IKEA represents something. So you can design and then you can also have a conversation with a dialogue. My approach to something that's, you know, that cemented in itself. Same with Nike, same with Champion. You know, I only collaborate with brands that I feel like I can have a dialogue on multiple levels with. Uh, I don't know. You know, I think, you know, timing, you know, a lot of people came before in a different era. You know, this current era, there's a lot more freedom, you know kids on the Instagram are photoshopping checks backwards and things. So it's just cultures moving. That's all, it's been like that since before now. You know, we're not the only ones to discover this. And I think for me, it was, there's sort of two tones to sort of like this pillar of design, which is sort of like, again, the post postmodern. Let's just change it because we've never seen it and it makes it interesting. You can go either like a punk route, which is just like self-serving to the artist or something, or you can, the way I see it, it's sort of like a goodwill, you know, and I took that approach. My thing with all the edits to the Nike was just reinforcing the iconography or the principles that the brand is. I was using it as a, a dialogue, you know, Roger Federer hitting tennis balls in the Jordan that say his name on it. It's like you know, to me, like, when Jordan is getting kicked out of the league because it's just a style choice 
that's against the rules, or you know, Andre Agassi is wearing like street clothes. It, it's the you have to. To me, it was like a, a conscious like, hey, I'm just turning the wheel back and forth. But the thing, the point is to underline Nike innovation. What what is important to that brand? Me as an outside designer, I can choose to exalt or put down. And the idea was to exalt it onto a level and find new space. So in the end, there wasn't any editing of my proposal, mm -hmm. be it on the, the actual shoe or, you know, the off-campus concept. Uh, I think it's like a sort of camaraderie, you know, it's a sort of collective, it's a community, it's this idea that, that there's open space, whether it's music, whether it's fashion, whether it's, you know, culinary it's not like necessarily a sort of specific thing it's a collective consciousness this is what we're into this is the trend flannels or dress shirts we're we're not into uh dress shoes anymore we're into sneakers we're not into you know it's like this sort of it's the upside is it's a sort of international community that never maybe existed in such a cemented way we have this thing social media where we can communicate and we are just a, a world of young people, no longer just like a niche culture in one city of young people. That therein lies, I think, some sort of new space. You know, a kid in Tokyo and a kid in Kansas are essentially talking to each other. I think we're soon to be at that cusp. You know, I've seen the sort of sign. You know, I've said this before, my idea is that, that you know, like all Rodeo Drive is updated. You know, Madison Avenue is like the storied history of these brands, but this new era, new style of design, it's sort of given that as a backdrop and they sort of like, you get this sort of energizing, you get this sort of refreshed approach about design and culture and those are inside the most like storied like brands. You know, that's what I think. I think we're a niche culture of designers. And I think we're also a new niche culture of, of artists, you know, and the more that we make collectively and sort of support and foster that we're going to see great works of art, we're going to see great design, we're going to see great collections again, if, if that community is sort of fostered and it's sort of one designer pushes another, one artist does an amazing show, we get this sort of like synergy. You know, my brain was like of a whole, like 100% of like a, a pie chart, only like 15% is actual product, you know, or clothing. The rest of that, you know, 85%, it's like there's marketing, there's business, there's build-out, there's pop-up shops, there's website design, there's digital, you know, there's culinary, there's furniture, there's, you know, all these other things that could serve that same ingenuity that we brought to t-shirts, you know. And that's more what I think is like, I think in the next three, four, five years that these like, sort of like streetwear in quotes way of thinking about cell phones can give us a different type of cell phone. You know, I've been focused on this, that like streetwear might be an art movement that we just don't know. We might have just sort of like short, gave it the short end of the stick and called it, you know, a skate brand. And that's what my work is focused on. It's not, not necessarily limiting myself to this way of thinking in sort of having a dialogue with fashion and fashion history. It's like, how can it relate to how we can make different products across all realms? Mm -hmm. You know, I think like, Uber is like a streetwear type idea, you know? To me, it's like, I often use streetwear as like a shorthand terminology for like being creative with limited to means. Like almost ready-made means. Like that's how a lot of this culture way of got started, like, give me a skateboard, watch me do these tricks, skate culture, you know, that's taking something and kids sitting for hours on end, like, learning how to flip the board in different ways or different types of grinds or something like that, but 
the, in the same token, it's like, hey, we all love Polo, we all love Nautica, we all love Tommy Hilfiger. We need to make our brand that's smaller. It's not about getting big. Let's make a logo, screen print on it, sell it. That's true. You know, it's like, hey, we're not going to look for a factory in China to make clothing. It's like, hey, let's buy this blank one, let's edit it. That's streetwear as the art movement. Then it's like Basquiat, you know, paintings, but then also going around Soho and graffiti, you know, Warhol, culture and analysis on, you know, the pop culture at the time, screen printing, Brillo Box, high art. You know, I think that the ethos of perhaps, you know, I'm just projecting, but using it as an example, like, oh, Steve Jobs gives us the app store. It's like, wait, we have the ability to use these apps to, like, call and give the location. Somebody synthesized, I was like, wait, it's already here. Let me call this restaurant or call the, you know, hey, make a system to remove taxi drivers. That's that same sort of like, you know, hey, we were born in the 90s, now it's the 2000s, we have the internet. We're using technology, packaging it up, and now all of a sudden, kids say, I need an Uber, I don't need a taxi. That's not, you know, that's why I use streetwear in quotes. It's not limited or degraded by this like, sort of like youth uh, obsession with a box logo t-shirt. It's a way of thinking. There's new roads to be made in that and we're at the cusp of it. You know, we're only like five years deep. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ten years. Like, the start to me, you know, obviously the start is like way everyone can say, but I would say like, you know, like Dogtown Z-Boys, like, hey, we have a shop, it's a skate shop, or, you know, you can't discount all the steps that got us here, you know, Nego developing bait to be a luxury brand and, you know, non de guerre, prohibit, you know, what was happening in New York, you know, the list goes on, but that's my sort of, my ambition is to sort of project that in the next 10 years or something that's like, oh wow, he came from this school of thought, this is where he was, you know, thinking, but now we have gallery shows and, you know, X, Y, Z, and there's these things that came from this sort of, you know, same sort of ethos and culture. Somebody just, just take a pen and just draw the line 16 times and be like, oh. And then, uh, to me, it's about confidence in the movement, and then it can go further. All right, I got a jet.